Okay, hi. Um, we uh, believe that part of the success of Rory's Story Cubes has been down to the design decisions that we've made along the way. And we want to tell you about some of them tonight, both the good ones that we planned and the accidental ones as well. So Rory's Story Cubes originally started as the MetaCube. It was a creative thinking tool that I used to use with clients. And it was designed to be portable, visual, and highly tactile to facilitate the creative thinking. OK, so <clears throat> kind of what was powerful about it is our brain thinks in pictures, and it doesn't like incomplete patterns. And this, the MetaCube at the time provides these incomplete patterns for the brain to, to solve and get its teeth into. Um, we found that the universal nature of the icons um, appealed to a much wider audience than just the clients that I was working with at the time. Um, so much so that we found uh, you know, unexpected people using it. Like my friend's daughter uh, kind of used it in, in school and then we found that um, families throughout the country were, were using it and schools and they were starting to ask us, uh, you know, where, where can we buy this thing? But um, we, couldn't, we couldn't actually sell it as a Rubik's Cube, so we had to find what the essence of it was. Um, and we found that it was really the, the visual and the kinesthetic nature of it. So we broke the Rubik's Cube into the 54 images on the Rubik's Cube into nine six-sided dice. And it actually became more of a game experience then. Um, it still retained the visual and kinesthetic nature, but it had this lovely added sound and kind of one more go element that um, has added to its success as well. So the, the first 500 sets that we got, um, they were printed onto dice. Um, but we quickly found that the ink was starting to smudge when people used them. Um, this was seriously not part of the user, the planned user experience. So um, we found a, a manufacturer who could produce uh, debossed dice. Um, so they're kind of embedded. Um, so it made them more durable. And it also added a really nice feature in terms of uh, what we call the rollability of the dice that people really comment on now. And as a side note, when we saw the iPhone and the accelerometer and the touch screen, um, we developed the iPhone app because this was, we could kind of recreate the physical experience. And this is why we've never done like a desktop version or a point and click version. Play experience sorted. Okay, so we had the play experience sorted out. Now we need to sort out the packaging, but we had no money to spend on design or development. Um, so luckily one day I found Anita taking some jewelry out of a box. Oh, God. and grabbed it, and it fit in perfectly. So <laughs> this was fine for selling online, but um, we found real resistance from distributors saying, you know, games are in big boxes, and we can't sell it for that price at that size. But our customers were telling us that they love the really small box. So we didn't look at game uh, or other game boxes. We looked at other products that use quality in a small package. So um, retain the high, high value of it. So we paper prototyped it into um, our little box and sort of kept the essence of the little black, black box that we had, um, but tried to increase the perceived value of it. And we worked closely with Paul Kelly Design on the, the brand of this. And we, we separated what the, the two users' needs were. The, the retailer needed a sleeve that could have all the information, but the user then, the end user, gets a nice little magnetic box to keep forever. So we think it's a lot of these little design decisions have contributed to the, the reaction that we're getting to the, the story cubes around the world. Um, and it's great whenever I'm feeling down and disheartened, I go to Amazon.com and read the customer reviews to remind us why we're doing this in the first place. Um, but that's not the end of the story. Um, as the product grows, it brings up a whole new set of questions that we have to solve and your user experiences we have to think about. Like, how do you sort out when you have more than uh, three sets? How do you sort the cubes back into their box when you've got a classroom that's maybe using six different sets? So that's where we had to come up with the color coding of the different cubes um, so that in the classroom or when you have more than one set, you knew where each set of um, cubes could return. And um, so, most of our sales are viral. When people play the game, they want to buy the game. So we've been re-looking really at the first experience, so how you experience this in a shop. And our Swedish distributor came up with this idea of a box that you can shake and play before you buy it in the store. And um, even though everybody loves the small box, for a special needs market, they actually need you know, bigger cubes for impaired visibility and motor um, skills. So we're developing Rory Story Cubes Max for a limited edition for that audience. Thank you.